tell us he rose. He rose with all power in his hands. I said he rose with all power in his hand. So can somebody lift your hand and say, God, send your power down. Send your power down. Send your power. Down. Christians in this house that are excited about the fact that he's won again. Let, let your power fall when your name is called. Prove, prove the doubters wrong. You're still mighty and strong. I need you to see, I need you to see the Father. She says, fight, 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 fight my battles for me. Then help my unbelief. So I can tell all my friends yes. yeah. <laughs> that you have won a over and over you keep winning you have won somebody and tell them, you know we've got the victory, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> tell them, even in this, we've got the victory. We have the victory. We, 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 we. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, we have. Can you do it? 
do me a favor, can everybody just put these two fingers up and declare, 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 declare in your life, declare in your family, declare on your job, declare in your neighborhood. We have.
Can you just lift your hands and say a great big God bless you to those listening all around the world this way. Come on, shout it out. Yes, God. It's Resurrection Sunday, church. I said it's Resurrection Sunday. Good news from the graveyard. When we begin this Sunday morning, we find three women coming to a graveyard. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mary Magdala, and Mary of Salome. They were coming like all those who've lost a son, lost a friend, lost a beloved brother or sister. They come like all those who lost a loved one. They were coming with feelings of hurt. They were coming with feelings of loss. They came with feelings of pain and despair, of emptiness and of sadness. They were coming simply to fulfill their religious obligation and ritual. They came to do what they were supposed to do. The ritual of anointing the body of Jesus. They came pressing pressing through their emotions of hurt and pain, pressing through their post-traumatic stress, and yes, their present traumatic stress. They came pressing through their depression and their tiredness and their hopelessness. They came simply trying to keep functioning. Anybody know about that? They came trying to just do what they were expected to do, fulfill their obligations. And they get to the tomb and they're met with the man at the tomb who tells them, why are you looking for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen just like he said he would. And the truth is they were startled. They were shaken. Hmm. It is difficult for them to believe even though Jesus had spoken about it, even though Jesus had promised it. Sometimes for the honest folk, Sometimes it's hard to believe, even though the promises of God have said so. I mean, they saw him nailed to the cross. They saw him hang on Calvary's cross. They heard his cries when he said it is finished father into your hands I commend my spirit they saw this blood dripping down his face his hands and his feet they had seen him pierced in the side they saw how darkness consumed the day and then they had seen him taken down from the cross and his lifeless body placed in the hands of his mother. They watched him laid in the tomb and rolled the rock in front of it. 
They had seen so much with their own eyes. And now as they came pressing through all their emotions and trauma, they're being told he's alive. It was just so much to try to believe. They had seen too much. And they didn't want to raise up their hopes again. They had hopes on Palm Sunday when the great shouting of Hosanna led him into Jerusalem, only to be disappointed on Good Friday. Have you ever been in a place where your hopes have been disappointed? I'm just talking to real people. Where you were left empty and because you've been disappointed by hopes and by people, it's hard to trust again. It's hard to get your hope up again. I mean, even though the promise is there, you've been disappointed. So you're careful about believing again. I mean, even when these women ran and told Peter and the others, they didn't believe them, they passed through them and pressed their own way to the tomb themselves. Sisters and brothers, I believe we can identify with those women and with their skepticism. Because the truth is, just like those women at the tomb, we've seen too much. We've seen people sleeping in viaducts and begging for food at stoplights. We've seen too many black and brown boys shot down by racist police. And nobody holds them accountable. We've seen black and brown boys shot down in the streets of Chicago over something said on social media or words on a street. And I don't know if you caught this past week while the CDC is saying things all the time about coronavirus. They also put a statement out this week that the number one killer of children in America is guns. We've seen too much. We've seen neglected neighborhoods for decades and then been told where there's no money to fix them. Hmm. Now listen carefully. But we have found millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars to send across the ocean to Ukraine. Now hear me, hear me. Putin is a terrorist and evil man. And I have no problem helping Ukraine. But it's a both and not an either or. If we can help Ukraine, we can help the south side and the west side of Chicago. If we can help people across the ocean, why the hell can we help black and brown people in America? And it is interesting to me that we are so vocal about what Russia's doing trying to take over land in Ukraine. But isn't that what we did at the Plymouth Rock? Isn't that did what we did when we went into Mexico and suddenly said, now this is America? Did we forget the Louisiana Purchase? Did we forget what America did? 
It's hard to be a moral voice when you're immoral. We've seen too much. We've seen the double standards and the legal system and the tale of two cities and we've seen the boarded up buildings and homes and the flight of businesses and the streets where we can't even get trees replaced and, and, and street lights while downtown people are sweeping the streets with street sleepers. We've seen too much. We've seen the differences of education and resources. A Whitney Young and a Walter Payton and then there's a Hirsch and a Harlem. We've seen the food disparities, the health disparities, the mental health disparities on the south and the west sides, different from the north side and South Loop. We've seen too much. We've seen too much every day. And just like those women at the tomb, we find it hard. We find it hard to believe because just like that woman at the tomb, I'm talking to somebody here, because of all the present traumatic stress, we find our lives like those women just getting up, doing what we got to do. Getting up in the morning, pressing through our day, trying to be mothers, trying to be fathers, trying to take care of our children, trying to take care of our families, trying to be neighbors, trying to be a good work person. Just like them pressing through because we've seen so much and it's taken a toll on our hearts. And yet, just like those women at the tomb, we come into this sanctuary this morning and we are proclaimed Jesus is not dead that Jesus is alive, that he is risen just like he said he would. And just like those first followers, even though we hear it and even though we want to believe it, it's hard to believe because we've seen so much, we've felt so much, we've gone through so much trauma. It's hard to believe it. Oh, we can get excited about it for a moment, but when we leave church and walk in the rest of our lives, it's hard to believe. What Jesus calls us to today, he calls us to believe. <laughs> he calls us to say, I need you to believe in your spirit and to let that belief be greater than what you see with your eyes. Jesus said, I know what you see, but today I come to see what you know and what you believe. That's why the writers of Hebrew said, without faith, you cannot please God. That's why Paul said in 1 Corinthians, if Christ does not raise from the dead, then all of our preaching is in vain. If Christ did not rise from the dead, our faith is in vain. Brothers and sisters, one year ago today, I was sitting watching you in a hotel room or an apartment room wondering if I could believe that I could see myself standing here again crying 
feeling resurrection, but feeling Good Friday, crying he's alive, but wondering where he was. That song, St. Q, saying, let your power fall. That song that Ricky had sent me, I listened to every single day to try to get my spirit to believe. And I remember last Easter Sunday saying, God, will I ever get back to that church? And he said, believe. <laughs> Sisters and brothers, Jesus was man and he was God. And because he was man, he felt everything we feel. He wept. He hurt. He wrapped himself in flesh so that he could understand us. That's why, can we feel? That's why we pray in the name of Jesus. So that when we are hurt and when we are burdened, it says Jesus sits at the right hand of the Father. And we pray through Jesus. Because the Father knows not what we feel. He's pure and holy and omnipotent and awesome. But we pray through Jesus so that Jesus can turn to the Father and said, your son is hurting right now. Your daughter is sick right now. Your nephew feels abandoned right now. Your children are crying right now. And when Jesus tells the Father, because he knows it, the Father sends, and then sends out the angels and says, my son told me about this. My son went through this. My son felt this. He was denied. He was betrayed. He was broken. Jesus knew how hard it was to believe because of all that we see. That's why after the resurrection, he spent 40 days showing up places. He walked through doors. He was cooking breakfast on the Sea of Galilee. He met two doubters on the road to Emmaus. He spent 40 days proving himself to be alive. And sisters and brothers, the same is true with us. While we have seen so much pain and so much loss and so much horror and so much injustice, every single one of us here this morning can look back over our shoulders and remember how he showed himself to you. You don't understand. You don't understand. See, 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 God knows how hard it is to believe because of what we see. So God is doing us like he did those first apostles. And he said, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to show myself to you. That's why he's opened doors that were shut. That's why he paid bills your finances could not handle. That's why he took you through storms and took you through fires that you could not imagine yourself getting out of it. That's why he protected you and provided you. And that's how he got you to where you're at right now. The only reason you're sitting here today is because God showed himself to you.
Is there anybody here that God has shown himself to? See, Anthony was mentioned about a preacher this morning who had told him, he said, you know what? <laughs> He's just how to preach, Michael, because it always has the same ending. He wins. Thank God for the same ending. Thank God that no what you face in life, we win. Thank God, no matter what hell you go through and what devil comes after you with, no matter what happens to your life, it's good to know it always has the same ending. He wins. Somebody shout, he wins. Say, thank God for the same ending. Say, thank God for the same ending. Shout out, we win. Uh, somebody ought to be excited about that. <laughs> I'm excited that we win. I'm excited that a year later, I'm not watching on an internet, but I'm standing in the sanctuary where God placed me. Somebody ought to be glad you came through some hell and high waters, but you're standing here today as a testimony that Jesus Christ makes a difference. I'm through, I'm through, I'm, I'm through. Sometimes, sometimes the word of promise is difficult to believe. But sisters and brothers, when you find yourself in that flux, Remember how he showed himself to you. And how many times he showed you that he's alive and that he's real and that he loves you. So like the man at the tomb, I come to declare to you this morning, no matter how heavy your spirit is, no matter what the reality is of your circumstances or your situations, no matter what's going on in your family, in your individual life, in Chicago, in America, or in the world, I come to declare to you, Jesus is not dead. He is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. You got too much proof that he's alive. He brought you through too many valleys to not know he's alive. But let me also tell you this. Because he is alive, today, despair is dead. Hopelessness is dead. Violence is dead. Sickness is dead. Suicide is dead. Injustice is dead. Hate is dead. Chucky D said, fight the power. But I got news for you. Today, we got the power. We got the power. We got the power! We got the power! So today, I serve notice on hell. Ricky witnessed Jesus coming out of hell. Walking up and seeing the death all around. Went back to the tomb to put on the robes of glory. What? Jesus. Why would you go to hell first? Because he wanted the devil to be the first one who knew. I'm alive. 
I've risen. I beat you, sucker. You thought you got me. But the worst thing you did was when you killed me. Because when you killed me, my blood dripped down and it touched all over the world. My blood runs today. So today I say to you, rise up. Rise up. Rise up with Jesus and in Jesus. And now it is you and I who must put evil in the tomb. Today, you and I put hate in the tomb, put violence in the tomb, put injustice in the tomb, put poverty in the tomb, put racism in the tomb, put everything evil in the tomb. Wait. But then we roll the real rock. Somebody said Jesus is the rock. Somebody say Jesus is the rock. And now we put Jesus in the rock of the tomb because can't nobody come through that rock. Can't nobody come through that rock. Can't nobody push away that rock. See, they try to put the rock of the world to keep Jesus in. But we got the rock of Jesus to put the devil in and keep him there. Yes. Jesus is alive. Put your hand on your spirit and say, he's alive. He's alive. Say, I don't care what I've seen. He's alive. He won. He's victorious. He's alive. And because he's alive, we are alive. And because he's alive, we win. And today is a day of new beginning. Today is a day for you and I to start understanding. We're alive. And the devil is dead in a tomb covered by the rock. Let me just say this. We hear all the time in church, the best is yet to come. Well, brothers and sisters, I declare to you today, the best is now.